In this video, I want to talk about how we actually go about estimating IV models when we've got multiple regressors. So the situation here is that we have, as we did before, our structural equation that is y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x plus beta 2 times z1, where z1 is exogenous and x is endogenous, plus this error term, epsilon. And the idea with multiple regression IV estimation is that we use z1 as an instrument for itself and we use another instrument z2 for x. But what does it actually mean to use z1 as an instrument for itself and z2 as an instrument for x? Because remember in our sort of bivariate model we derived an explicit form for beta hat iv which was equal to the sample covariance of xi or sorry yi rather with um, z so that's y minus y bar times z i divided through by the sample covariance of x i with z. So that's x i minus x bar times z i. And both of these obviously are summing from i equals 1 to n. And so we had an explicit form for beta hat i v. But what is it for the case when we have multiple regression, or we have multiple regressions rather? Well, the way in which we can think about it is we can think about there being three sorts of conditions which we think about as being satisfied by various variables within our model. The first is the sort of trivial one that we write that the expectation of our error, epsilon, has to be equal to zero. And essentially all that's doing is it's just saying, well, let's set alpha such that this error term always on average is zero. And that's absolutely fine. That's not particularly restrictive. The second assumption which we're going to assume is, well, we've assumed that Z1 is uncorrelated with epsilon. So the second assumption is essentially that the covariance of epsilon with Z1 has to be equal to zero. Well, another way of writing this is that the expectation of epsilon times Z1 has to be equal to zero. And note that we're talking about population quantities here. We haven't talked about anything in the sample yet. So that's the second assumption. So the first assumption is this, the second assumption is this. And then the final assumption is that Z2 is uncorrelated with epsilon. So the final assumption is that the covariance of epsilon with Z2 has to be equal to zero, which written another way is just the expectation of epsilon times Z2 has to be equal to zero. So in order to estimate the parameters alpha, beta 1 and beta 2 using IV estimation, then what we do is we take the sample analogues of each of these three conditions. So condition 1 implies that the sort of sample analogue of this is that the sum from i equals 1 to n of the error, so the error in our sort of estimated error is just yi minus alpha minus beta 1 times xi minus beta 2 times z1i has to be equal to zero. And note that we don't know alpha, beta 1 and beta 2, so we're estimating them. So these are the sort of actual parameters which we're solving for. So that is the first equation, and it's just the sample analog of this expression here. Okay, so that's what we get from expression 1. Expression 2 is just that we have that the sum from i equals 1 to n of Z1i, so Z1i, if I write it down like that, times the error Yi minus alpha hat minus beta 1 hat Xi minus beta 2 hat Z1i has to be equal to zero. And note again that this is just the sample analog of condition two because this term in the parenthesis here is just our estimated error Ei hat. And then our final condition just says that the sum from i equals 1 to n of z2i times this estimated error, which is yi minus alpha hat minus beta 1 hat xi minus beta 2 hat z1i has to be equal to zero. And again, the term in the parenthesis is the estimated error. So now we've got three equations and we've got three unknowns. Essentially, we're solving for alpha hat, beta 1 hat, and beta 2 hat. 
So we're able to do that because we've got three equations and three unknowns. And note that if it was the case that z2 essentially wasn't correlated with x, then we can sort of think about this as removing this term here in this third expression. And if we do that, we actually have a problem because there will turn out to be many different ways in which we can actually estimate the parameter beta 1. So we've actually got some serious issues with using IV estimators.